Today's webinar is going to be about cybersecurity assets and threat modeling with Capella. Uh, the rationale is that uh, there's an increasing risk of cyber attacks on systems that poses a significant threat to organizations and or individuals worldwide. Identifying such threats as soon as possible during the engineering process is thus a stake for all of us and this requires a close collaboration between systems and cybersecurity engineering teams. Uh, and so today is going to be about a new Capella add-on called DARK uh, that enables system engineers to address uh, cybersecurity concerns while defining system architectures. And now let me introduce uh, the speakers for today. So Sophie Plezanet has been working in system engineering for several years, especially during the last five years in Thales. She's passionate about MBSE and she joined Thales Corporate Engineering in 21, where she's an MBSE coach supporting the Thales engineering teams to adopt MBSE practices. She holds a Master of Engineering and Master of Research in Advanced Systems and Robotics. And Juan Navas is an MBSE expert in Thales Corporate Engineering. He leads the team that accompanies managers and architects implement MBSE practices on operational projects to improve their engineering performance. He's a system architect with more than 10 years of experience. He holds a PhD in computer science and an MSc in control and computer science and electronics and electrical engineering degrees. Thank you. Uh, I will start sharing my screen. Okay, so as uh, Laurence said, uh, today uh, we were going to present this uh, new viewpoint, a uh, new extension to Capella, uh, which concerns the, um, the cybersecurity uh, aspects of uh, systems architecture. The, uh, the agenda today is the following one. First, we will talk a, a little bit about the motivation, why we developed this, uh, this extension in, in Thales, and we, we make it... Uh, available for uh, Capella users all around the world. Uh, then uh, I will uh, present the main concepts that are introduced by this, uh, this viewpoint uh, and the, uh, the main features, but uh, the uh, detailed uh, presentation of the features will be done by, by Sophie uh, through a demonstration. Uh, and uh, to conclude, uh, we will talk a little bit about the perspectives regarding this, uh, this viewpoint. So if we go straight to the uh, motivation. Um, the motivation is a situation that we, uh, we want to avoid in, uh, in, in our engineering projects. Uh, it's a little bit caricatural, but uh, it's a although realistic one. Uh, in our projects, uh, we have seen in the past that uh, the cybersecurity concerns were uh, assessed or tackled um, too late. Uh, I mean, later than, than required. Uh, and even a few days before submission uh, to security certification uh, authority, we realized that we uh, we need to involve uh, cybersecurity experts and we asked them to uh, assess cybersecurity attack scenarios, but not only to assess them, but also to do it uh, in an exhaustive way, meaning that we want to uh, make sure that any situation in a cybersecurity risk uh, is um, taken into account. Uh, so to do so, uh, we provide them with uh, inputs, uh, which can be a bunch of Excel files, uh, several documents, uh, huge documents uh, to be uh, analyzed in some days. <laughs> uh, we ask them to demonstrate also that the architectural choices that have been made in the past uh, without or taking into account, uh, poorly taking into account cybersecurity concerns are indeed compliant with these new cybersecurity constraints. Uh, and if not, we uh, should let the customer understand that any change will lead to at least six months of delay. Obviously, it's a little bit exaggerated, but I'm pretty sure that uh, some of you have already uh, lived a situation uh, like this. So what are the consequences of this uh, kind of situations? Well, first of all, we cannot be quite confident about the cybersecurity protection level uh, in these cases. Uh, we also experience late uh, high impact architecture, architecture change request. And uh, when architecture cha is changed um, late in the engineering process, we all know that it will impact a lot of other engineering artifacts and engineering deliverables. And so 
it will drive to uh, delays and additional costs to the project. Either they are um, assumed or taken into account by the customer, but in some cases they are not. So at the end of the day is a poor performance of our engineering effort. Uh, it also leads to uh, unsatisfied customers and also to unsatisfied project teams. So obviously we intend to avoid such a situation. Uh, there are many, I mean, there are some alternatives that can be considered. Uh, the first one is to over-design, meaning, meaning that uh, we will design uh, by default to take into account any possible situation to be avoided. Um, well, th this can be done, uh, but is not necessarily suitable for uh, competitive markets. And even for um, less competitive markets, it's, uh, it's not necessarily uh, what is expected by our by our customers in terms of uh, either the quality but also the uh, the cost of engineering another solution could be to overstaff meaning uh, having uh, a cyber for instance a cyber security expertise uh, fully devoted to the project so for competitive markets this is not always possible but even in less competitive markets is not even possible often uh, as cybersecurity experts are a resource that cannot be found very easily. So what the, the approach that we have taken in our company is a cybersecurity by design approach. Uh, what is this? this? It means that uh, we want to take into account the cybersecurity concerns during the engineering process. We are going to privilege co-engineering between cybersecurity and system software, also hardware engineering teams, meaning a strong collaboration between um, different teams. In the picture that you see in the, in the screen, uh, you see um, this, the mainstream, the main systems engineering stream, which is led, for instance, by the chief architect and chief systems engineer, um, we, that will uh, work on the system context and needs and also on the definition of the system solution, taking into account uh, all the uh, relevant concerns of the design, uh, among them the security, cybersecurity concerns, which in, in their turn, they also have their own security context and needs analysis and their own security solution uh, design. And uh, there are a set of shared and um, mapped concepts on, for which we will talk a little bit afterwards and a set of co-engineering interactions that shall take place in order to, uh, to make this approach uh, successful. I won't go into the details of this uh, cybersecurity by design approach uh, because uh, we presented uh, presented it in the um, in the COSI International Symposium a few years ago. Uh, it's a paper that is called Towards a Model-Based Approach to Systems and Cybersecurity Co-Engineering. So if you are interested, I recommend to, uh, to take a look to this uh, paper. What I want to um, focus uh, today is on the enablers for such cybersecurity by design approach. We have identified three enablers. Uh, first one, we need to reach a common understanding of the design. Uh, we need to have a shared comprehension of the solution, which are its elements, its interfaces, its functions, data flows, the context of usage, uh, because know, knowing our design allows us to ask more clever questions. And a um, key um, aspect here is to uh, the second enabler to enable effective communication between stakeholders, meaning to facilitate the dialogue between security experts, architects and customers or people that have many different cultural backgrounds in even uh, I mean, technical backgrounds. Uh, we have to um, ensure that the communication between them is, uh, is possible, is effective and especially regarding cybersecurity concerns and artifacts. To do so, we also need to provide engineering practices and engineering tools uh, in order to support this technical dialogue and to do it all through the engineering process. So includes elicitation of assets, characterization of threats, etc. Some of the uh, activities that we will talk about it about uh, right afterwards. So in this third enabler is the focus of the viewpoint that will be presented today, which is called dark. Uh, dark is a uh, words play uh, because it uh, makes think about dark I and mean, obscure things. 
and cybersecurity risk, but also it's uh, related to the ARC, ARC, architects, because it's supposed to be used by the uh, system architects, meaning the people that are uh, designing the system, uh, the architecture of the system with, uh, with Capera. So if we dig deeper into the features and especially the concepts, and we will start with the, with the features, um, there are main four, uh, four main features. Uh, the first one is to provide a shared and tailored representation of the architecture of the solution of the system. Uh, the second one is to identify the critical interfaces and trust boundaries of the solution. I will talk about this uh, concept afterwards. Uh, characterize the primary and supporting assets, same, and identify threat sources, threats, and their impacts on assets. I will go into the concepts and then into the demonstrations and hopefully it will make clear uh, how uh, these uh, features are uh, implemented. First with the concepts. I will start with the concept that is a um, key concept from uh, cybersecurity. Uh, there is uh, the, the primary asset. It's not always called a primary asset. It's sometimes or just called asset. Uh, anyway, is what is valuable for stakeholders, including customer, but also internal stakeholders, our own company, and hence need to be protected. There are different kinds of primary assets. Uh, we have identified three of them. Uh, first, there is the service kind uh, asset which is an activity, a process, or a functionality that needs to be protected. So an example could be a geolocation service. You could consider that this service, or for instance, the availability of this service uh, needs to be uh, protected. A second kind of asset could be an information kind asset, meaning data, for instance. Uh, in the geolocation uh, example, we could consider that the service <clears throat> doesn't necessarily need to be protected, but the information, for instance, the location data, needs to be protected. So in this kind, we are talking about uh, information kind primary asset. An enterprise kind asset is kind of a grouping of uh, service kind or information kind assets. So this is a cybersecurity concept, but we have mapped this concept to uh, concepts that are come from the Arcadia method, which is implemented in Capella, and that most of you uh, should know now, uh, so I won't go into the details, but we uh, map uh, um, service primary assets uh, with uh, either functional chains or operational process. So in the remaining on the slides, I will only, only talk about functional chains, but keep in mind that we can also talk about operational process. Uh, we can also map the uh, service kind primary assets to functions, uh, which are later are allocated to, uh, to components. Um, and the information kind uh, primary assets are mapped to what, how we, ma we consider, um, we represent with model data uh, in Capella, which is the concept of exchange items. A second major um, concept that is introduced by the uh, dark viewpoint is a threat. A threat well, there are many definitions, but a uh, general definition is a situation that is unwanted by the stakeholders and that has to be avoided. In cybersecurity risk analysis, uh, I mean, specialists uh, use several concepts uh, behind this, uh, such as uh, attacks or uh, feared events. We decided to only to, to include one concept that encompasses these uh, concepts, threats, attacks, and feared events, and includes uh, attacks such as eavesdropping, which is secretly listened without consent, denial of service, making a resource unavailable, tampering, which is a kind of a one kind of sabotage, and others that will be detailed uh, during the demonstration as well, we presented during the demonstration. Well, the threats are not, uh, well, they do not come uh, alone. They uh, involve, and to, to make it real, they involve uh, some kind of actors, some uh, kind of entities. Uh, we uh, make the difference, uh, well, well, we can tag entities and actors in Arcadia with uh, an attribute which is a threat source. A threat source, for instance, on SPY, uh, is... Um, well, it's an entity that is involved in a, in a threat uh, and can be, and they can also use other kind of actors uh, to attack the system. 
For instance, we can consider that a spy will manipulate somehow our operator, which is already uh, an actor uh, that has already considered in the architecture of the system. Um, last but not least, if we want to uh, describe further in further detail how an attack uh, or a threat can materialize, attack attack can be done, we can use uh, common concepts already existing in Arcadia and Capella, such as functional chains and scenarios to uh, describe further this uh, how this uh, can happen. Um, there are other concepts in Arcadia that are useful um, in, in, in this context. Uh, for instance, the exchanges uh, between functions, uh, the capabilities, or we can also talk about the operational capabilities in the operational analysis perspective. I will talk about capabilities to simplify, uh, in which actors are involved and functional chains describe these, uh, these capabilities. There is also the components, of course, to which the functions are allocated and that are connected with uh, actors, with external entities. And because they are connected with external actors, they are, uh, in fact, the, the external interface of the system. So we also define the concept of trust, which is the ability to be relied on as honest or truthful. And we can consider actors, uh, external components, uh, to be um, trust or not. Uh, and this kind of um, allow us to identify interfaces that could be critical and that shall be monitored uh, very carefully uh, during the engineering process. So as you see, um, most of the concepts at the right side of this picture are well-known Arcadia architecture design concepts, whereas the uh, concepts at the left side of the picture are most of them uh, concepts that are introduced by the uh, the dark uh, viewpoint, cyber security viewpoint. And the links between these two domains are what makes possible the uh, technical dialogue and the uh, co-engineering between these uh, two uh, worlds, let's say. There are other relations that are kind of a calculated relations, or there are composite or a little bit complex re relations that are automatically uh, done by the tool. For instance, um, we see that uh, the fact that a, a primary asset is represented by functional chains and functions, uh, sorry, by functional chains, and that functional chains are invo involved functions and exchanges, we can do a direct and indirect relation between the primary assets and the functions and the exchanges. Based on that, we can also build a relation between the primary assets and the components because the functions that are involved and represent these primary assets uh, are uh, allocated to these components, either behavioral components or physical node components. I mean, indirectly, uh, we, we simplify it in this diagram. But this relation, which we call supported by, is what identifies, uh, defines that a component is can be considered as a supporting asset. A supporting asset is an important asset if the architecture that, as the name uh, indicates, supports uh, a data or a service that needs to be protected. And last but not, but not least, the fact that uh, a component is uh, maybe an interface with a threat source or an actor and that it supports an asset makes it a target for attacks. So components that uh, have, um, I mean, allocate uh, critical information, allocate critical functions are candidates for attacks and, of course, need to be considered uh, carefully during the uh, cybersecurity uh, analysis. So at the end of the day, what, what we have is that the, um, I would say, the Arcadia matrix, which uh, synthesizes the, uh, the perspectives in Arcadia, the different points of view or points of analysis when uh, defining an architecture and the different aspects, the different concepts that uh, need to be taken into account uh, is uh, extended with a cybersecurity aspect. And in this cybersecurity aspect, uh, we will be driven uh, to ask a set of uh, relevant questions. For instance, what are the assets that the stakeholder value the most? We can ask these kind of questions, especially 
in, uh, during the operational analysis perspectives. In the system analysis perspective, we can ask questions such as what are the external interfaces that can be exploited to perform an attack? During the logical architecture, in the logical architecture perspective or conceptual architecture, we can ask ourselves what are the main subsystems that are concerned by cybersecurity and that require special attention. And in the physical or finalized architecture, we can ask ourselves what are the internal interfaces that can be exploited to perform an attack. These are just examples, but this is the kind of questions that we can ask ourselves and we should ask ourselves uh, at different stages of the, uh, the construction of the architecture model and the engineering process to take into account the cybersecurity concern. So I will leave the floor to Sophie that will demonstrate uh, the um, how dark works uh, through uh, some videos. Thank you, Juan. So first, I will show you where you can download the dark viewpoint. So download the dark viewpoint on the Eclipse Capella website in the add-on pages. So here you have uh, the different resources and among these resources, you have a sample model. So here we can have a look to the sample model. You see here uh, the architecture overview of uh, this model and uh, it's a system uh, which uh, provides visuals of the crown to public forces and help also to identify some suspect individual, individuals thanks to uh, the provision of uh, some data by the public forces. You can see here uh, the different components of the system, also external alter and key interfaces. Among these interfaces, you see, for example, that there is an undesired interaction between a foreign agent and the drone. With Dark, you can uh, define uh, if uh, the different elements are considered as trusted or not. So I will show you this just after. For that, you can use uh, some uh, dedicated layers uh, you have diff different layers to activate uh, uh, related to, for example, to security levels or for trust uh, boundaries. We will do it just after. And also to see uh, the different uh, type of uh, data. So I will go uh, in uh, another diagram. So this diagram and activate the dedicated layer to see uh, the different uh, trust boundary of the system. I will uh, have a look to the different uh, components and uh, actors and uh, elements. So you see that the system here is considered as thread seed. We uh, add uh, an approach, a conservative approach, about considering that only the system here is considered as thread seed. So mobile police forces and ministries of interior are considered as not trusted here. Now we have uh, defined uh, which elements are considered as trusted. We can activate a uh, cybersecurity layer here. So you see the different uh, layer. We activate the last one, the cybersecurity trust boundaries. And you can visualize on uh, this um, uh, view uh, the different uh, elements and uh, the surface of attack here. It will be uh, useful to translate, for example, uh, into a requirement letter for, uh, to add, for example, some authentication mechanism. Of course, you can add um, a note to um, capitalize the, the, the elements you had identified. Now, I will, uh, uh, I will explain you how you can, um, uh, how you can uh, uh, define the different threat sources, threat and assets. So for that, I will use a dedicated diagram. I and uh, I will uh, um, add uh, some assets, threat and threat source and the relation between them. So I call it threat and assets. First, I add a service kind primary assets. It's, it is about the provision of uh, public event visuals. You can see that I 
have uh, the possibility to map it to uh, some operational process. And I can uh, define other properties uh, like the security uh, levels. So for example, um, I can define a level two related to availability and add some descriptions. Then I can uh, add the thread source I identify uh, later, uh, uh, previously, so the foreign agent. So I uh, put foreign agent, I said it is a thread source. I can also add the thread source profile, so it's five to five, and a rationale to explain that, for example, the foreign agent may be interested in uh, the blocking, the provision of the visuals. So this thread, the block, uh, the provision of visuals can be uh, now created and it's a kind of denial of service. So I put the, the different information, block visualization of uh, the public uh, event uh, is uh, name hit, denial of service, the level is two and the rational. Now, uh, after I created these three elements, I can uh, link the different elements uh, between them. So a link of involvement uh, between the foreign agent and the threat, and also a link of uh, application between the service kind asset and the threat. I can also uh, decline uh, this and refine this uh, first uh, threat uh, analysis to other perspective. So for example, in the uh, system analysis, you can see uh, 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 the primary asset, the functional primary assets, uh, which can be related to the previous uh, primary asset that I created. And you see that it's mapped to functions and functional change. You see also that uh, the system analysis uh, has made emerge a new uh, kind of um, threat and a new primary assets. So the new threat is the fact that um, the primary agent, as the system uh, is dealing with some uh, citizen uh, data, the suspect individual data, for example, uh, so the foreign agent can uh, be uh, interested in listening and intercepting uh, the communication uh, that carries uh, the private data. And such the threat is considered as critical. Uh, so level four or five. So, you do, so then you see that uh, the new uh, primary asset here is uh, of um, the kind information primary assets and uh, it's link, it's mapped to the citizen private data exchange item. The, Security level here required is free on free, uh, on uh, for related to the cons to the confidentiality. If I come back to my um, to the overall diagram where I was uh, just before, I can now uh, display uh, the this new primary asset in the diagram with the corresponding uh, cybersecurity layer. So I activate this uh, cybersecurity layer. And uh, I uh, and I display uh, after the um, primary assets uh, by going in the palette to have the footprint of this asset in my uh, diagram, my architecture. So you see in blue uh, the different uh, elements uh, concerned by this uh, citizen uh, private data, and uh, you can. Um, add uh, a note about uh, the conclusion about, uh, for example, the interfaces to, to be uh, carefully uh, monitored. Okay, so now that I um, show you uh, how I can uh, define uh, the, the threads, the thread source and the assets, I can uh, show you how we can uh, describe uh, some potential scenario of attacks. Uh, so, uh, there is uh, several ways of uh, describing uh, it. We, in uh, this demonstration, uh, we will uh, have a look at uh, the threat of EVOS dropping and with a potential scenario of uh, attack uh, uh, with manner in the middle, 
So here you have an illustration with a functional chain and uh, in a data flow blank, and you see the different functions in involved. So you see that the principle of uh, the attack is to um, retrieve some uh, address and uh, to change them. We can have more information uh, with a scenario uh, about how this uh, attack is performed. Uh, for example, in the scenario, we see here that the foreign agent uh, will send a broadcast packet within the radio network till it will uh, uh, get the addresses and then it will uh, change, uh, the, change the parameters. We can also uh, have a look uh, to the different uh, functions and components to be carefully monitored uh, with the footprints uh, of, the, uh, of the threats here and also for then the, the assets I will show you just after. So in this diagram, you see the footprint of the previous threads. We just uh, uh, have a look. And in the following video, you will see how we can see the footprint of uh, the assets. So we uh, can add the uh, the functional change with deals with the fact to retrieve citizen data uh, and provide visuals and suspect data. Here you see, for example, that uh, um, there is a, a lot of functions involved in, in the provision of uh, uh, these elements. And if we have a look to um, the footprint of uh, the other assets, uh, the citizen private data assets, we can have uh, the same um, we mark. So um, maybe there is an architecture uh, issue and we need to uh, have a, a better architecture about uh, the segregation of data. So to make uh, some uh, rework about, uh, for example, uh, the, the allocation and the decomposition of functions. So we, we can uh, capitalize this uh, review uh, of the architecture and uh, and make some decision about rework. We can also uh, have a, a look about which are the functions which uh, um, are dealing with uh, the data and which are um, and how they are dealing with that. So, for example, we have a different uh, icon uh, if the um, the function, for example, store suspect individual information deals with uh, storage of data. You have uh, the, this icon. And if it's about uh, remanent data, for example, uh, for communicate, you have another type of uh, icon. You can also activate the super security layer to have a look about uh, the consistency of your architecture uh, re related to the required level. Uh, so for example, the required level uh, of security uh, related to confidentiality. So we are, we are activating this layer. And we see that we can have uh, here have a, an incoherency with the uh, this uh, function, the store suspect individual information. We just have a look. We saw here that, for example, uh, the security level is uh, two. So the the code is that the the, da the darker uh, here, the stronger the security level is. So we see that uh, it's uh, only to the security uh, level of the function, but that uh, the citizen private data, the primary assets uh, so uh, contained in this function uh, require a level of three. So we, we need to uh, do some rework about that. And we can capitalize the review of uh, the of this diagram with uh, some notes. So it could be a review performed in co-engineering uh, between the cybersecurity team and the system engineering team. So now we can uh, have a look uh, uh, on the different uh, fit main feature we, we just uh, uh, discovered together. So uh, for example, um, we are, we are uh, we have discovered together what are the elements to be trusted and how can they be identified like uh, like this in uh, the dark viewpoint, thanks to the dark viewpoint. 
And uh, what could be the tax uh, surfaces and how can they be also uh, identified uh, with uh, the viewpoint? You discover also how you can define some threads, some thread sources and assets with a dedicated diagram. And uh, what are the possible scenario of uh, attacks um, uh, that could be um, uh, described with uh, the Capella and with this uh, new add-on? Uh, so you, you can describe it, for example, with um, some scenario or with um, a data flow. And uh, you have also the possibility with this new add-on to have a look about, for example, what could be the different functions and elements to be carefully monitored. And uh, also check if your architecture is coherent with, uh, for example, the required security levels uh, defined uh, by the cybersecurity teams and the uh, cybersecurity uh, threat analysis. So here are the main features, but you have also uh, much more uh, possible. For example, you can uh, generate some document uh, with, for example, M2Doc, uh, for example, to justify your designs. You can also uh, define some uh, library of attacks, components, and also, for example, security measures, vulnerability. You, we will have a look uh, just after about uh, how you can, for example, uh, uh, use PVMT uh, for that. And uh, as we discussed uh, just before, uh, uh, as you identify, for example, some attack surfaces and need of authentication, you can translate it into requirements. And uh, these viewpoints come with uh, some uh, domain-specific validation rules, for example, to ensure uh, that uh, your design is current uh, consistent and uh, that coverage is uh, okay. Now I will uh, show you uh, a little uh, uh, video about what could be uh, uh, with a prototype, uh, the possibility with uh, the creation of some um, drone uh, vulnerability library or quantum measures. So, for example, if we take uh, the example of the EVOS dropping threat we just analyzed, you can see here that I created uh, two um, domains with PVMT. So, one about drone vulnerabilities. So, the, the first one, for example, uh, in the example we just discussed was about uh, a man in, in a beetle attack. So, I can put it in my uh, model, so wireless vulnerability, man in the middle, and put the related uh, wireless protection as stated. So for example, in this case, we can uh, add a security control about um, encryption. So uh, I add this to the communication uh, component, and I can also uh, add uh, this to the function send an uh, acknowledgement message, including the DHDL addresses. So here is a way to uh, to have some um, uh, improvement and enrichment of your model. But you can also uh, customize your um, uh, your cybersecurity uh, viewpoint with, uh, for example, uh, the fact to um, add some new threat kinds or uh, new uh, uh, elements related to security levels, uh, which could be specific to uh, your uh, context. So here you see that uh, to access to the configuration of cybersecurity, uh, I need to um, uh, uncheck uh, the uh, EMF resources filter to, uh, so I can uh, display it into uh, the project explorer. And uh, here you see then the cybersecurity configuration that I can add uh, some value in the threat kind. Uh, so for example, one about uh, cloning and one about uh, retro engineering. So here is a way to, uh, to uh, make it, uh, to tailor it and to fit it to, to your needs. And then, uh, after this uh, demonstration of the main features and uh, uh, over uh, uh, features of uh, Dark, I will let the flow to, to run, to, to conclude. Great. Thank 
So yeah, so regarding the perspective, we're very really, very short here. Uh, there are two kinds of perspectives that we that we see. Uh, the first one is to extend the uh, dark viewpoint itself, uh, because we know that there are some uh, cybersecurity concepts that have not been included uh, yet uh, for very well reasons. Either they are done differently in the organization, either this is I mean is work in progress. I would say. Uh, so for instance. Um, we can define security controls concepts that mitigate threats, uh, or we can define the vulnerabilities of uh, supporting assets uh, and formalize how they are exploited by, by threats. Even if, in fact, as uh, Sophie uh, showed before, uh, the property values can already prototype and be used to, um, to take into account these um, this cybersecurity concepts. So there, there is a solution, but uh, uh, we would like to go further into uh, formalizing and including these concepts, the cybersecurity concepts in the, in, the, in the viewpoint. And the second family of perspectives is to enable the digital continuity. Uh, it means that, for instance, we would like to uh, develop bridges or uh, incitate and will encourage uh, other companies to develop bridges uh, between dark and others specialized cybersecurity risk assessment uh, tools and, and practices uh, because um, uh, what we have presented today is uh, is a tool that allow to take into account cybersecurity concerns during uh, systems architecture definition but in fact is 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 not as extensive as complete and exhaustive as a, I will, a real uh, cybersecurity analysis, a risk analysis uh, tool, which is uh, way more, uh, and there are a lot of more concepts and, and uh, tasks that are done. So it's, it's really out of the, of the scope, but there can be and should be um, uh, bridges and digital continuity between uh, these kind of tools. And the second digital continuity aspect is to, uh, we would like to develop Python for Capella extension to support dark and to be able to extract information that is defined through the, uh, the dark viewpoint. So a final note, uh, dark is uh, available for you, but it's not only available, it's also open source. So feel free to contact us to work together on developing, uh, developing further this uh, viewpoint. And I think it closed the uh, presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, of course, we will remain here. We'll stay here for, uh, for questions and answers. And uh, we will uh, answer them. Uh, if there are other questions, we will answer them in the forum. And even if you want to uh, get in touch with us, you can see our um, coordinates uh, in the slides. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Juan. And I confirm that there are many questions, so I see a lot of excitement here. And uh, without further ado, let's go to the first question. OK, so this is the first question. Is it possible to add more thread types than the ones created by default? So more thread can, yes, uh, as I demonstrated just uh, before. OK, so I think that uh, that has been shown in the video. So uh, I think that was a question asked before the video, actually. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question. Are the assets further elaborated when we move to other architecture perspectives? Uh, I will answer this one. In fact, um, you can define uh, primary assets uh, at each uh, perspective of Arcadia. And the, uh, the rationale behind this is that, indeed, uh, at the operational analysis uh, perspective, we can identify a set of assets from the point of view, for instance, of the stakeholders, of the operational actors and entities. Uh, and as we uh, progress in the perspectives and the analysis and the uh, design of the architecture, we can either refine, realize these assets differently and even make emerge new assets. So indeed, we can further elaborate uh, the uh, the assets uh, in other uh, perspectives, and there is a relation that hasn't been uh, explicitly shown, but is there is a realization link between the assets uh, in in different um, uh, pers Arcadia perspectives. Okay, thank you very much. So next question: Can you share insights from internal use of the tool? Do you already see improvements in terms of transparency and engagement considering security by design within uh, engineering? 
Uh, cybersecurity is a very peculiar field because, um, I mean, normally companies are kind of reluctant to share uh, their uh, returns of experience. But in the cybersecurity field, this is particularly true. So even if I knew or I know, I wouldn't share this, uh, these insights. Uh, what I can say is that it's used by, uh, by our operational projects. Some of the operational projects. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, next question about what is traceability? Is it accountability? Uh, no, I think it's traceability uh, of data, but this is really a cybersecurity property uh, that is, uh, it's better to be explained by a cybersecurity specialist than I mean not. Okay. Okay, then let's move on. A question about PVMT. Can PVMT be used to extend the set of properties included by default in uh, this new add-on? Yes, and I thought it was also a question asked before the demonstration. So uh, yes, uh, you saw some uh, uh, kind of um, prototype to extend uh, the new cyber the new cybersecurity element by adding, for example, some vulnerability on some security controls. Okay, so that confirms that was the scope of the last video, I think. Okay, thank you. Which standard did you target for the dark annotations information, if any? I don't know what you mean by annotations, but maybe a more general um, uh, remark about the, the standards. Uh, in, in cybersecurity domain is again a very peculiar one, uh, and it's a very peculiar one because there are plenty of standards. Uh, so one of the difficulties that we had when when um, specifying and, and defining this uh, this viewpoint is that uh, even in, in our group, because Thales is a huge group which address tackles different industrial domains, we have we don't have a common standard. We have common uh, references for the group, but not do not have a common standard. So in fact, uh, although some of the concepts are introduced by, um, by dark, like uh, primary assets or um, or uh, threads uh, can be inspired in uh, many standards like a NIST or uh, French standards or other countries uh, standard that were studied uh, during the, uh, uh, the, um, the the definition uh, phase of the of the viewpoint. We cannot stand, and I wouldn't say that we follow a given specific standard, cybersecurity standard for, for dark. Rather, is uh, rather general concepts that are defined to be tailored to uh, by, by the projects, by the users, to the standards that are applicable in, uh, in their domain. For instance, uh, regarding, I don't know, cybersecurity, confidentiality, uh, security uh, as, um, annotations or levels, uh, we didn't define uh, some named levels. We define like one, two, three, uh, and it's up to the project to uh, either extend it or uh, to define what in their own context one, two, three means. Okay, thank you. That's fair. So next question about someone who's interested to see if maybe DAC could be used for a bit more than just cybersecurity, it seems. Is it possible to identify and differentiate physical threats and cyber threats? Well, in fact, it was conceived to address uh, cybersecurity uh, threats and, and assets. Uh, in, but uh, what we see uh, on the field is that indeed it can be, it is used in some cases also to uh, represent uh, uh, physical threats, I mean, security and not only cybersecurity aspects. So it hasn't been made for it but it has been used uh, for it as well through okay. some tailorings and modifications. So the next question is here. Uh, is it possible to use Python for Capella? Once again, I think it's a question that's already answered by your uh, demo. So let's move to the next one. But not necessarily by the demo. No? Oh. Demo is, is one of the perspectives. OK, mm. thank you for the clarification. Is it possible to filter the dark elements? Uh, I, I guess with the filtering add-on, maybe. Um, 
No, I don't think so. In the in the current, uh, I'm not sure. I didn't uh, I didn't test it. I didn't test the filtering uh, uh, viewpoint uh, with uh, with dark. I don't know, Sophie, if you have tested it, but I don't think it's possible. No, but I uh, will test it and we will uh, say mm. on the forum if it's uh, possible or not. Thank you for the question. Great, that's perfect. Is the shown example uh, publicly available? Yes, indeed. You can download it on the link uh, on the Capella website uh, in the add-on uh, section. And uh, you have uh, the, in the help, uh, you have also some information about that. OK, perfect. Uh, does the library of attacks come from a specific framework and is it expandable? Uh, I think it's joining a question we've already had, but a bit broader. Um, in fact, the library of attacks that have been shown is just for illustration purposes, um, because what we see in the field is that it's very difficult to have a common uh, library of attacks uh, that is applicable to all uh, the domains. So uh, the tool rather uh, is like, I mean, it's, it's a feature of Capella, not even dark. Um, what the tool provides is the capability to create these libraries, but it doesn't provide a common library. It's up to the user to define a library that is applicable for its own context and as I was, I was as, as, as large as possible as, as they want. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm moving a bit to someone else. Let's see. Uh, sorry, I may have missed the definition of attack surface. Is it referring to components which can be targeted or is there a more inside the umbrella of attack surface? I, I just evoke it uh, uh, related uh, to the diagram with the trace boundaries and the key interfaces to be monitored. Uh, for example, there are some interfaces, uh, some elements which were with uh, private data. Uh, and so it could be interesting to carefully monitor that. So I, it was at this point uh, I discussed this. Hmm. In fact, in, in dark, we regarding the attack surface, uh, we, we only refer to identification of the components that are part of this uh, surface. But the, the I will have a further specification of the attack surface uh, is, uh, is even done uh, through a textual, uh, I mean, text in the descriptions of the uh, model elements or uh, textual requirements that are attached to the uh, to the model elements. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we have time for one last question and the rest will be uh, on the forum. So let's pick one. Yeah, you mentioned that cybersecurity by design uh, was the guiding approach that motivates DARK. It seems quite close to uh, GDPR. Uh, so uh, do you see any bridges there? Are you aware of any initiative where it might have been tried to deal with GDPR concepts? Um, uh, I mean, it's it, it might also be applicable to personal data protection. Uh, yes, because it's uh, applicable to data <laughs> uh, and to protection and especially to confidentiality aspects of data. So uh, that it is applicable. Um, Regarding the, uh, I would say the, um, the, um, I would say the similarities with the privacy by design or data protection by design approaches. Uh, I, it's not only the, the, I mean, there are several uh, cybersecurity that by design approaches. Uh, so there are similarities, but I, I cannot say that it's like a compliant with uh, something like this. Okay, and you did not take GDPR, GDPR into account when you were designing DARK, did you? Not in particular. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much for your time and your great presentation and uh, your answers. I think we'll have to uh, finish now. So the rest of the questions will be answered uh, offline and uh, we will uh, post that on the forum as usual. I just want to uh, finish with a few uh, slides of my own to announce um, the next, okay, the next uh, webinars. So uh, soon we will have, uh, on April the 13th, we will, ha we will have the next webinar of this series that will be about uh, the assessment of environmental impacts of your system architecture. 
that will be given by Arnaud Dumogard from OBO. So uh, keep posted and uh, please uh, come and attend this webinar. The, the topic is really great. I, I've been uh, personally involved uh, from far on this topic and it's really very interesting. And also I wanted to announce that there is going to be uh, two online trainings uh, soon, uh, end of May and end of June. So May the 29th and June the 26th. So uh, uh, for several days, of course, you can see the exact dates uh, uh, just here. So if you're interested, please contact sales at obosoft.ca uh, for uh, information and to register if you want to register. And that's it for me today. Once again, many thanks to uh, today's presenters, Juan and Sophie. And for uh, thank you all for your presence and your attention. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.